where? Hello there. Once again, you decide to take another revealing peek back into history. What fair is nature? I said it to today. Once again, it's time for a throwback Thursday. A second chance to look at some truly awful podcast. No, wait. A second chance to see how far Vices and Teramo has come over the last eight years. New episodes will be released uh, pretty much weekly, but Thursdays I've reserved for throwbacks to see how far we've come. A lot of the information on here no longer applies, whether that be businesses or links that may not work anymore, so be advised of that. But again, I want to thank the patrons that we have at this time, though they may not have been here the first time these episodes were recorded. I am thanking them again because they're helping us move forward with our new episodes. And those are patrons such as at Lonely Bob, Big Al V, and Goldfish. In the meantime, I hope that you enjoy what you hear. Welcome to Vices and Teramo, 30 Minutes to Kill. This week's movie review is Feed a 2005 Australian release starring Alex O'Loughlin, Patrick Thompson, and Gabby Milgate. Welcome, Welcome to, to 30, 30 Minutes, minutes to, to Kill. kill. If you find yourself over in Maui and you need a photographer, check out Jerry Gregory Photography. With over 20 years experience, Jerry Gregory is truly one of Maui's most extremely talented and professional photographers. He's a member of the Hawaiian Professional Photographers, National Association of Photoshop Photographers, and Professional Photographers of America. Jerry has also received National Award recipient status in the prestigious Loan Collectors Division of the PPA. If you want to get in touch with him... Call 808-874-3089 or 800-778-6284. You can also email him at grigorypho at hawaii.rr.com. Welcome to episode 8 of 30 Minutes to Kill. I'm going to start off our laid to rest segment with a letter from Stephen from JAFMP. And I'm sure some of you may know him already. He's got a pretty good podcast. You need to check it out. The link is also be in the show notes here. Uh, the email I got from him said, listen to the first six episodes of your show yesterday. Really liked your approach. Haven't seen frailty since it came out and I'm anxious to see it again now. Also enjoy the fact that you don't exclusively cover the movies and delve out into other things you are interested in. Uh, he goes on and then later in the, uh, later here in the letter, he says, if I have any criticism, it would be the fact-checking. I tend to ignore that kind of thing if you get the just right, but some people will assume that you don't know what you are talking about and tune out if you get too many points wrong. He says, like, uh, Morricone, M-O-R-R-I-C-O-N-E, Morricone, wrote 
the vast majority of the things score. Uh, and he said that the original 13 ghost wasn't technically in 3D, but the ghosts were tinted so that you could watch through blue filter and the ghost would disappear in case you were too scared to watch cartoon do- ghost. Um, well, cool. Thank you very much for the letter, Stephen. Um, and as far as the criticism, I, I have to agree with you. I know that I'm rather weak on double checking some of my facts before I actually record. So I apologize if I got anything wrong. Uh, the two things that you brought up were things I wasn't even aware of. So, uh, again, if there's anybody I would have trust to go back and double check my records, that would be Stephen. So, uh, again, thanks for the letter. And let's see what else we have for our laid to rest segment. The majority of the music this episode will be performed by Cockfight Club out of Tupelo, Mississippi. You may have heard the, heard me mention them earlier on earlier podcasts, but this episode I plan to dedicate exclusively to their music. So uh, you can look forward to that. Sam This week's movie review is for the movie Feed. And uh, this is a little bit more hardcore uh, in the sense that uh, it deals with subjects that definitely aren't for kids. Some of these other movies I've reviewed are fairly mainstream Hollywood, or maybe not mainstream, but they definitely had big studio releases or big money backing them and so on. This one... Uh, the movie that I watched here is an uh, unrated 2005 feature, and uh, it's from Australia, and it's called Feed. And I'm going to read to you what the synopsis is here. After uncovering a sexually charged website that features morbidly obese women being held captive and taunted with fattening food, Australian cop Richard travels to Ohio to investigate. Viewing the Aussie's appearance as an opportunity for fun, for a fun game rather than a reason for him to go offline, the site's sadistic webmaster lures Richard into a dangerous game that's unappetizing to say the least. I was surprised to see that the Wikipedia didn't have much on this movie. It simply said that it was a 2005 film directed by Brett Leonard and uh, just has pretty much one line about it. It says the plot. The plot involves a police investigation into the sexual fetish of feederism, where a feeder will feed gainers, a woman who gets sexually charged pleasure from gaining weight and eating. So, uh, as you can see, it's obviously uh, a little bit more, I don't want to call it a delicate subject, I guess. Well, it's something that typical Hollywood theaters wouldn't necessarily go for so a few quick notes about this movie it starts off right away with a disturbing image right there at the title screen uh, and also if you've seen the cover art for the DVD um, yeah it's, it starts off disturbing right from the very beginning um, the music selection for this is great, but all the more disturbing because since we kind of knew what was coming, the song Cherish coming on right there at the beginning, playing all soft and lovely, was uh, just kind of added to the unsettling of the uh, of this movie. And uh, one of the other things that noted right away is the strong use of color initially in the film, almost to the point where, for me, it was distracting. It was okay, and it kind of got toned down, so to speak, as the film went on. But it, like I said, starting out at the beginning, there were such bright, harsh colors that it uh, 
well, I guess I said that already. It was distracting. Um, this movie contains scenes of cannibalism. Uh, there's junk alerts. Uh, counted probably at least four of those, maybe more. Uh, so there's that to look out for. Uh, I would have included maybe a breast count for, you know, titillation, but no, the director kind of takes anything that might be titillating, and I do stress the word might, and removes those elements by, well, uh, doing split screen shots during those type of, uh, scenes. Yeah. Like I said, this movie isn't for everybody. You'll have to decide for yourself whether it's something you're going to want to see. The best way I could think of describing this would be American Psycho meets Hannibal Lecter meets uh, something else. I'm not quite sure what that third thing is. If you see it and you've got an idea, let me know. Um, there isn't, like I said, there just isn't anything quite like this that I've seen anyway. So I can't quite add that missing element in there, but it uh, has lots of disturbing issues. Uh, one of the reviews that I was reading about it had strongly cautioned or warned the fact that the detective himself has lots of problems and isn't necessarily a likable character. I didn't find him that, how should I put it, choose my words carefully here. I didn't find him that off-putting. He obviously had his problems and his own personal demons that he was dealing with. But in the end, he was still a character that was um, arguably trying to do the right thing. The killer in this, or the suspected killer, is very disturbing and one of the other complaints was that they showed too many scenes of his childhood interspersed throughout the movie and I don't think that was true at all I actually think that uh, not that they necessarily needed more but I thought there was a pretty fair amount the right amount you needed some kind of backstory to make this all make sense and the snippets that they showed definitely gave you something kind of an idea something to go on as to why he was the way he was though he was so far beyond crazy well that just sucked because i just lost everything that i had just done for this podcast so half of the stuff just went away just that quick um let me see where we're at This is going to be tough to go over again since I just lost everything, so I'm not sure what I had already put down on the broadcast and where I was going with everything. So I want to pick up where I know I left off by reading another, um, another synopsis written by Claudio Carvalho from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. And in this, it says, In Sydney, the Interpol agent Philip Jackson investigates crimes in the Internet with his partner Nigel. After a mission in Hamburg, Philip has trouble in the relationship with his liberal girlfriend, Abby, that tags him a chauvinist pig. While doing research, while researching the web, Philip finds a bizarre site where a man shows obese women being fed by him. He finds the origin of the site in Ohio. Without authorization, he travels to the USA pursuing the perverted Michael Mesenkamp, a.k.a. Michael Carter. When Philip meets Michael, he surprisingly knows who Philip is. Further, Michael tells him that he's not doing anything wrong since he is releasing fat women from the standards of thisness imposed by the society. However, Philip discovers the true motives of Michael and begins a personal war against the deranged criminal. Well, the problem in this is that everybody has some form of derangement. 